Okay. Hey, everybody. Again, thank you so much for being here with me. Um, my name is Professor Kelsey Coes. Um, I am a professor here at Divination Academy. Um, if you haven't been here with us before, we're so happy to have you here. I'm so happy you found us. Um, Divination Academy, we are a pagan academy, and we believe that everything should be free and accessible to all. We don't feel like education should have like a paywall in front of it. So everything we do here is always offered free. All of our retreats, our book clubs, our classes, our workshops, all of that. Um, so that's what we're here, we are here to offer you. Um, if you haven't heard of us before and you like what happens with us tonight, I super hope that you send us a direct message into, <laughs> thank you, Robin, uh, send us a direct message on Facebook so that um, you can get enrolled saying that you want to enroll as a student and one of our admins will get back to you. Um, we've gotten a little bit better at turnaround time, but it may take us still a little bit. So just be patient sometimes. Um, Robin did just drop into the chat our website and our YouTube channel um, as well. Those are two other resources for you. Um, our website has all our information about our different our professors, our certifi certification programs we offer, our private apprenticeships we offer. Our study guides will be there. All of my current ones are on there. Thank you so much, Katie, for putting them on there. But yes, if you've missed any of my classes, instead of having to ask me for them all the time, they are on the website now. Um, I will do my best to stay on top of that. Um, and I think we're going to actually just create a shared folder for everybody for mine because I have so many study guides. Um, but yes, go to our website. You'll see study guides from all of our other professors. You'll see um, resources for books, um, resources for our sources cited, our bibliography pages, all of that. Um, so check it out on our YouTube page. I think we're at 140 different videos and a lot of different class topics. We have herbology, the dark goddesses. We have Enochian magic. We have crystals. We have so many different things on there. Just go and check it out. Um, and again, if you want to be a student, please enroll. Please, uh, please just enroll. You get access to so many things. Our private community, our Facebook page, you get access to your professors all the time, mentorship, a lot of stuff. Um, so definitely just enroll after this. Um, the last little bit of housekeeping, um, if you haven't been here with me before, and it does look like there's quite a few new people that I'm not recognizing. Um, um, a little bit about myself. Again, my name is Kelsey Coase. Um, I'm a professor here. I have been a solitary practitioner for about 15 plus years. Um, I am in central Minnesota, so that's kind of why I'm solitary. Um, my magic is very folk style. It's very ritualistic. It's very ceremonial. Um, I work with energy. I work with deities. I work with everything. Um, I'm a mystic, I'm a, great ma a great practitioner, so I pull from what can people consider the light and love and the left hand path. Um, I don't view it that way, but I pull from everywhere. Um, so I really hope you enjoy it tonight. Um, my circle casting and things is gonna sound similar, but it pulls like, again, it pulls from everywhere and I hope you enjoy it. Um, how my ceremonies and stuff work is I always do a little bit of education first. I want you guys to know what you're doing, the energies you're attaching to, what you're working with before you do any of that. So I'll do a little bit of a rundown of what the new moon actually is and what it means. I'm not going to go into super detail because I've done four or five of these now. So I've gone into a lot of detail about this before. So if you want to get like really nitty gritty on like new moon, go and check out specifically like the Virgo one on YouTube. I get really into detail on that. Also my study guide. I'm super detailed in the study guide for you about the new moon um, and all of that entails. And then every study guide, I try to tweak it also and make it a little bit different. I offer you guys different type of spells, different types of rituals, different types of invocation and different types of prayers. So always take a peek through past ones as well to pull from the previous new moon. Um, and then I will teach you a little bit about Scorpio energy, what it does for you. And then I will call a circle, call down the moon. And then tonight we're gonna do shadow work. Um, because Scorpio is all about transformation. Um, again, that's why Scorpio hits me in the face every year, this time of year. Um, so I will walk you through and hold you guys through some shadow work. Um, we'll do that tonight. It's going to be, it may seem simple compared to past ones if you've been with me before, but it's going to be really, really, really beneficial. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to jump into the study guide. Um, before I do that, does anybody still need the link? If you do, put it in the chat or anything like that. Thank you, by the way, for all the compliments in the study guides. I thoroughly enjoy creating them. Like it's actually like how I decompress. Um, and so I actually thoroughly enjoy them, but I, I also appreciate when people appreciate them. Okay, so I just plop the study guide link in there in case anybody needs it. Um, we'll get going here. 
Um, so again, basics of new moon um, and kind of like why we honor the moon in general. Um, the moon, super, super sacred. It represents feminine energy. It represents emotion. It represents um, a lot of like magic as well. Um, most deities and stuff that have to do with the moon represent magic as well. Um, so it's a great way to tie to nature. Um, it's another great way to help. It coincides with Mother Earth, a great way to cycle with Mother Earth as well. Um, if you ever want to see like your mental health, your emotional intelligence, your magic, if you want to see that change, I promise you make a commitment to honor every new and full moon every single time for an entire year. Don't miss a single one. And just by doing that and connecting to the moon and connecting to the earth while you connect to the moon, which is really what you're doing and that flow of energy you create um, that manifestation and that releasing cycle you create, it's going to, it's going to phenomenally open up your life. Um, if you want to make one huge change in your life and you want to like really spiritually start, like that's honestly like my first, my biggest recommendation is honor that moon every new full moon and new moon. Like I just touched on, is really about manifesting. Um, so the moon, new moon is really, if you think about it in that cycle, um, especially if you think it, think about it from like a nature standpoint is when you're planting the seeds, it's what you're planting that you want to grow it's when you're, those intentions are being set. It's when you're really thinking about truly what you want. Um, rest and reflection is also really important um, in order to figure out the seeds that you need to plant. Um, and this goes from um, like across generations. This goes for just that one cycle. This goes for the year. Like you can manifest and reflect and anything and plant any type of intentions during this time. Um, so that's the basics for really what the new moon is. Again, if you want to go into super detail about it, please go watch the Virgo one and then look into the study guide. I have a lot in there for you. Um, and then make sure I always remind you guys, cleanse your crystals, purify your place. Um, I've talked about sweeping out your space before. Um, I want to double back on this because somebody brought this up in my protection class that I... I'm really sorry. I was not thinking about like if you, and I hadn't touched on it before, like if you couldn't be mobile. Um, I do have friends that have brought this up to me and I don't know why I just, I didn't bring it up in a class. And I actually have done it myself um, when I was in a cast for weeks for my knee being shattered. Um, so what you can do is when you're sweeping it out, I've talked about it before. If you have been in my class before, um, I say every new moon, every full moon for a way for cleansing, cleansing, being super, super intentional about actually physically sweeping out the energy throughout every single crack, nook and cranny throughout your home. Um, if you can't be mobile, you can do this by being like wherever you can and get the closest that you can to the center of your room and you can do it visually and you can do it energetically. Um, I've done it myself. You can pull that energy and you can pull it to you um, to then be able to re release it that way. Um, so make sure that you do that. Um, it's the new moon. So make sure you do that. Do a ritual bath, a purifying bath, purifying shower, any type of ritual shower. Um, and make sure, again, you're focusing on manifesting. Um, you can still release, but you really, really want to focus on the manifesting. Um, I'm all about balance, so I always release when I manifest. Um, but you really, really, really want to focus on the manifesting when it comes to the new moon. Um, I threw some affirmations in there for you for the new moon as well. Um, I also have in the study guide as well for you. Um activities that you can do. I have prayers for you. I have invocations. I even actually wrote out specifically how to do a new moon cleansing bath this time for you um, for this month and this new moon. So take a look at that too, if you really want to know specifically like what to put into that. Um, make sure that you're smudging, you're cleaning your house, your tools, resetting your altar, um, and making moon water, of course. Um, I think I linked my study guide for moon water in here. I believe it's at the top of the page, uh, the, the very first page. Um, so if you don't know how to make moon water and this is new to you, um, I do have a really thorough detailed study guide on that. Um, okay. I'm going to jump into the chat real quick. Do we have any questions really quickly? just about the basics of a new moon. Again, I'm not going to go into super detail, but if you guys do have any like basic questions, I'll answer them really quickly and then we'll go into Scorpio. You know, people say they hate, I love cleaning. So maybe that's also why like I really push and recommend it. So you can see that in the chat. I hate cleaning. I love cleaning. I, I love it. Um, It just... Like I thoroughly enjoy actually the task of doing it. Not the reward after it, but like I thoroughly enjoy the process of doing it. Um, this will be my first moon ceremony and altar. Ooh, interesting, Marty. 
Um, if you have any questions about what to put on there, um, I can definitely answer that after class. Otherwise, I think I put a lot on there. Um, anything that's going to correspond with this Scorpio moon directly in the moon itself. Um, so if you work with crystals, like selenite's a really good one to have. Um, labyrinthite's a really good one to have. Any type of quartz because it amplifies everything. Um, and then, yeah, I'll get into the Scorpio correspondence a little bit later. Um, moon water as well. You can create it and make it. And then typically with the new moon, I always do something for like prosperity and abundance. So I make sure that I have like cinnamon or bay leaves or any type of like yellow or green candle or correspondence on my new moon altar so that I can manifest and bring in prosperity and abundance and good fortune and good luck. Um, that's a big one. And then cinnamon's on every one of my altars because it's just cinnamon has so many good qualities. So it just goes every, every time it gets switched out. Um, yeah. And then again, check out the, I do have a study guide, my study guide for new moons, all of them. I have a lot of different ideas for what you can put in your altars, um, but that's a good place to start. And I have an entire study guide all about altars in general. So you can check that out too. Um, I did teach a class on that. It just hasn't been posted to YouTube yet, but I taught an entire class. I broke down very, very detailed on how to make an altar. Um, okay. We'll jump back into the study guide now. We'll talk about Scorpio. Okay, so Scorpio specifically, uh, <laughs> again, I have a very, very love-hate relationship with Scorpio season and Scorpio energy. I am all about transformation, rebirth, renewal, living in liminal spaces, like like I'm a gray witch, like I, I practice from everywhere, like I pull from everywhere, but Scorpio just, mm, it's just a very like hit you in the face quick like really completely turn your upside down like transformation and it's every year it's every single year at this time my entire world gets completely flipped upside down like in every single shape sim a way shape or form like financially my relationships my friendships my career like my job like every single time during this year like Scorpio is all about transformation um and it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very passionate, it's a very fluid, it's a very fast moving, it's a very quick, very intense transformation. Um, it's, it's, it's very resourceful. It's very focused. It's very, very deep, very, very deep in perspective. Scorpio is an element of water, of emotion, like Scorpio, Scorpio is very, very passionate, like very emotional, very perspective, perceptive, like very, very deep. Um, it literally seems like a lot of times, like for about two months up to Scorpio season, like there's things that really start poking at me and like, I'm like, okay, okay, I really need to start doing shadow work on this. I really need to start pull pulling back the later a little bit. And Scorpio season hits and it's like, nope, by the way, we're just going to take this, pull it out from underneath you. You have no choice. Your life is changing. This is what's happening. Um, and it, it's very, usually big. like I said, it's very abrupt. It's big. It's passionate. It's huge transformation. Um, it also may hit me really, really hard because as much as like I'm a gray witch and like I live like in duality and liminal spaces, like I am a Virgo, like to a core, like I have nine of my 12 houses are placed in Virgo. So like transformation, like as much as I love it, like it's chaos and my order does not like it. Um, so that also may be why to me, like it's just, it's very, very abrupt. But most people that I talk to, like Scorpio season and Scorpio new moon and especially new moon it's very very disruptive um it brings a fresh start it's a super super big rush of energy it's to bring back your strength it's to bring back your power um when it comes to like transformation when it comes to like relationships and fresh friendships like it's really going to push you to transform it to like if anybody is draining your energy is any if anybody is no longer serving you Jealousy is going to flare up and you're going to cut ties. Like you're not going to want to be around that. You're going to get also super, super motivated to like work towards your goals, to have hard work, to need to have initiative, to really, really start to push forth those projects that you've been thinking about. They're not really going away. You know, you should do something about it, but you just, you just haven't quite done anything. Like sport, this passion, like this transformation energy, like, this moment, like this time of the year is when it's really going to push 
for you to just like really push for your goals. Um, I think on top of being Scorpio, it's also, we just came out of Samhain, which is the new year. So you have that new year energy still really coming hard at you too. So you're really going to be focused on what you want to do. Um, I get crazy about goal planning right now. Like this is when my vision board and my goal board gets reset. This is when my personal development plan for the year gets written. Like I don't do, I, I, I don't, I usually during this time, I won't even pick up a video game controller because I get so focused on personal development and self-development and transformation that it's literally all I can think about. All I can focus about, think about is how I want to self-improve, how I want to transform, how I want to grow. Um, it literally, it becomes very, very, very focused to my life, very focused to who I am, even more so than it already is. Um, and it's really, again, it's super, super about empowerment, empowerment in all types of ways in your career, in your life, in your relationships, in your sex life as well. Because Scorpio is very sensual, very passionate, very emotional, not just like hook up and like, I just want to walk away like sex. It's like, it's empowerment. Like I am going to have, like, it's very sensual, sexual in, in the empowerment way. Like you're doing it to make yourself feel good because you feel confident because you have that power to do that, not the other way around. Um, and it's going to, again, make you super passionate towards things that you want to start, towards things that you want to do. Um, if you start to really focus on more of like the darker side of it and really let it overwhelm you, though, this is when I've noticed like people hit burnout and they can get lazy and really unmotivated because of the burnout, because they let this energy get destructive. They let it get really too powerful. They take on too much. They take on too many projects. So they try to transform way too many things at once and they they don't have the ability to transform and harness. I am a thousand percent guilty of this I have done it to the point of a mental breakdown like a complete absolute mental breakdown like couldn't leave my home without shaking on the floor like I have pushed myself to that point because of this energy so please be super 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 careful about that um that again that's that is the darker side that is again be very very careful about that make sure that you don't let it overburden you um and it can also make you get very very focused on your finances um so be be aware of that um it's going to make you focus on your finances in a way into where it may start to make you feel you get passionate about fixing it, which can then start a kind of a little bit of a shame spiral if things need to be fixed, I would say. So just be aware of the shame spiral. Um, be passionate about the fixing it, the transforming it, and like using this energy for that abundance and using the energy for that that change in your attitude and your mindset towards it. But don't let it overpower you in a way to where you feel shame about previous things that have been done. Um, so that's something that like I have also noticed with this energy when it comes to transformation, especially in the financial area or the intimacy area or the relationship area. Um, I will say this this Scorpio, very personally for me and what I've noticed from a lot of people I've spoken to so far, um, this one's really focusing on relationships a lot. Um, a lot of people's relationships are really, um, I mean, I, I know three couples who have been, been together for over 15 years who have uh, filed for divorce um, in the last two or three days. Um, so this has been like really, really transformative when it comes to empowerment and being willing to like walk away and focusing on relationships in, in that sense, in that area and really, really, really harnessing like where there's balance and what really radically needs to be transformed and shifted. Um, when you're working on shadow work um, right now in this area, it's really during this time, again, it's going to be really, really deep shadow work that you're going to want to focus on. You're going to want to focus on things that are no longer serving you, like to the core of like your soul's purpose, not on like a surface level of like what's no longer serving you in your day-to-day -day -day life, but like as like a soul's purpose, like your sacred contract all the way down to that far. Um, it's going to ask you and your shadow work needs to work on really looking at deeper realms of yourself that you haven't experienced before and really focus on asking like your inner child to be willing to come forward if you need to do inner child work. Um, because of this being such a transformation time, this is a great time to kind of do that with shadow work. Um, within the Scorpio season. Um, also, when it comes to shadow work during this time, you're going to want to make sure to focus. I'm really harnessing on shadow work right now, by the way, guys, I don't do it quite so much with the signs during the new moon, but because Scorpio is so much about transformation, like shadow work is going to be so, it's so crucial right now. It's so absolutely crucial right now. Um, some other great things for shadow work right now are going to be about your intuition. 
Um, so you're really, really going to want to harness in and work on your intuition um, in the sense of accepting and being confident in the fact that you have it, how much of it that you have and not being afraid to use it. So doing shadow work in that sense when it comes to your intuition, um, not in the sense of expanding it, but the sense of like having, like I said, the confidence to to realize, to fully harness, understand you have it, how much you have, and to let go of the fear that comes with it. Um, and then also like, what are you really, really struggling to face? Like, what are you really, really struggling to face? Is something sitting right in front of you that you're just avoiding, you're not paying attention to, you're not looking at? Um, if you are uncomfortable in your life, unhappy in your life, truly, what is the root of it? Like, what is the actual root of it? Not what is the surface level, like, deep down, like, what's the root? Like, what do you actually truly secretly wish for? Um, this is not like, again, this isn't like secretly, what do I want my life to be like to be happy? It is if an area of your life that you're feeling discomfort, you're feeling unfulfilled is your relationship looking at secretly, like really secretly, if nobody was sitting here listening to me, if nobody could really ever hear my thoughts, if I didn't have to worry about feeling guilt, if I didn't worry, I have to worry about feeling shame. Like what do I actually secretly wish for and to happen in my relationship that I'm missing. That's causing me to feel discomfort. That's causing me to feel like it needs to be transformed. Um, or in my financial situation, like secretly, what am I really, 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 really wishing for that's causing me to make bad financial decisions? Um, parts of your identity that you may hide to yourself. Like now's the time to do shadow work to really figure out if you're wearing a mask, what that mask is, how to remove that mask why you're wearing that mask, if you have multiple masks, like who they all are. Um, lots of things when it comes, like I said, to, when it comes to truth, it comes to really, 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 really digging deep um, with this shadow work. Um, when it comes to like sexuality and sensuality and like the passion that comes with Scorpio behind that energy, um, it's really looking at like cert, not just surface level, like am I satisfied? Like am I, is my partner making me happy? It's, it's no, like Am I leaving my like sensual sex sessions? Am I leaving them truly satisfied? Like, am I leaving them satiated? If I'm not, what is missing? And how can I communicate that to my partner? Like, this is going to really, really hone in, like when it comes to shadow work with this. Um, no matter how long you've been in a relationship, no matter how good it is, like so at some point in time, like this is going to change and you're going to change. So I encourage everybody to look at this. Um. During this time, you can really work on beginning again, especially when it comes to Scorpio. So if you're looking for a new job or thinking about a new job or new career, this is a great time to start looking at that. Um, this is when you're going to really push for that. Um, and when I, it's really just a great time to do it. I did put a spell in here for actually um, a new job. So you can take a look at that in the, in the study guide as well. Um, <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to jump back in the chat here for a second just to see if there's any questions really quick let's go let's see does what cause you to get Michelle? Does what cause you to get sick or illness? Because I wasn't looking in the chat when you asked it. Uh, does the Scorpio moon cause you to get more illnesses or sicknesses? I don't think so. I okay. wouldn't consider that to be a part of it. Okay, I I was just curious because everybody's sick in my house. My son and my husband have a I think a chest cold, and I got um some kind of infection that they just um um they thought it was a boil, but they just cut it open today. I had to go to urgent care twice, and now they want me to go back in three days because they took a culture on, and the doctor seemed a bit worried. 
Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. Yeah, because there's a red line going up my lo- up, up my arm, so. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm sorry everybody in your house is not feeling well as well. I hope they all get better. As far okay. as I know, um, the Scorpio moon and the moons, as far as I don't know, the moons don't really affect, like, that even like sicknesses or cause sicknesses or anything like that um i'm just gonna guess it's probably because it's the time of year and this is when everybody really starts to get sick and a lot of stuff starts really coming through my family just had covid a couple weeks ago so i really i i'm super sorry though that everybody in your house is not feeling well. yeah and uh, that's uh what i was guessing too but i just wasn't sure if it had anything to do with that and uh as for me it probably has to do with my um uh ms or autoimmune disease that i have so that's probably i probably picked something up um and um i guess it turned into an infection unfortunately i'm (laughs) sorry to hear that it's you know it's something i gotta deal with so you know i'm just I'm gonna burn candles, do my healing, healing spells, prayers, whatever people want to call it, and try and stay positive. Sage is also an antifungal, an antibacterial. It also actually clears that out too. It can help with that when you burn it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Do I see? Oh, honey, I see a hand raise. What do you got for me, honey? This may be a silly question, uh, but first, Michelle, I hope you and your family get to feeling better soon. Um, This may be a silly question, but what is the proper way to spell like a scorpion person? Is it like a normal scorpion with the O-N or is it scorp I-A-N? Like scorpion. Scorp beyond? You, you know what I'm trying to say? I get, I, yeah, I do. And now you have me questioning it. <laughs> I feel like it's A-N. For some reason, it's, tell. I, I think it's A-N. The way that, like, what you're referencing, I think it's A-N. Okay. I, I, I think, think, I, think like... it's, I don't know, though. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, I've seen it spelled, uh, Scorpion with the A N, like it's you know, like um, for lack of a better way to put it, European. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh-huh. like the scorpion is the animal, so I I just kind of figured there I, should be a difference I, between the animal and the person. But I honestly, honey, I don't even think I noticed until you pointed it out that I've seen it both ways. I think my <laughs> brain just read it, but you're oh, you're right. For some reason, my brain likes the A N. I don't know why, but my brain keeps going to that one. Okay. But I'm not. I'm gonna say either one's not wrong, and I'm gonna look into this after class actually, because now I'm super curious. You okay. do this to me every time. <laughs> every well, time. I'm just glad it's enjoy. It's it, it's enjoyment. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. Okay. Any other questions, guys? If I get into more specifics on the Scorpio energy. I weren't born on the. Oh, looks like Robbie and Robin looked it up. Scorpionic, actually. Oh, interesting. I kind of like that. I don't know why, because they're kind of like, haha, by the way, we're not going to even like do what you... we're not even going to be the word you think we should be. We're just going to put a different one in there. Scorpion. Like, Oh, sorry. That just is very Scorpio too to me. I'm. I just. I'm sorry. I'm like, how yeah, we have to be completely different? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, we're gonna jump back in. Okay, where was I? I don't know. I jump around in the study guide sometimes. I always cover all the information. Let's see. Okay, we'll do correspondences so I don't forget to do that. Um, so because Sawin just happened as well, and we're still kind of like in that liminal space, you actually can still create ancestor altars and make sure that you have ancestors on your altar during this time. 
Um, you can still make sure that you're visiting the dead, going to cemeteries and graveyards. Um, and you can also do like any type of magic work during um, within those boundaries. If you have not been to one of my classes before, I'm going to say it again now because I think it's so important. Um, and again, I just think it's so important. When you go to a cemetery or a graveyard, it is my biggest of recommendations that you not only bring the offerings for your ancestors, your dead, or if you're not using your ancestors, your dead for like whatever ritual you're doing and you're offering for that, but you also bring one specifically for the graveyard and the cemetery itself. You leave it at the gate where you enter. You thank that sacred, sacred ground and that sacred place for all of the energy you are going to have access to and all of the energy that you are honoring. Um, I just, I highly recommend it. I just feel like that space, that ground, that energy, that boundary, it needs to be honored just as much as the ancestors that you are going there to honor itself. Um, so again, if you choose to do this, please, I highly recommend doing that and adding that to part of your practice. It doesn't have to be something big, just some type of offering. Um, you can also, when it comes to Scorpio season for correspondences, um, you can look into like any type of things like new kinks, new sex, new sex things that you want to do, new sex sensual pleasures. You can also look into repurposing old things into new things. Um, this actually also seems to be a trend that I do every time this year without even thinking like I start refurbishing things. Um, this time last year was when my brand new altar got refurbished and I redid it, redone. I have my son's playroom and a bunch of furniture that I just started doing a couple of weeks ago. I didn't realize how, what was happening until like a weekend. I was like, God damn it, Scorpio season's coming up. Um, but that is something that you can do. I do it all the time. Um, also, when it comes to like the fact that this is very transformative, this, this is very liminal, um, do some alone time right now. Really, really make sure, like truly actually alone. Um, as for some people, like I know that's really, really hard to do, but even if it's just like sitting in your car for 10 minutes, finding some space outside to get to for five minutes, just like any, like a shower, being alone, like any way, shape or form. Again, like I get, it's really, really hard. I have a two and a half year old. Sometimes I don't even get to shower by myself. I can't go to the bathroom by myself. So like, I, I get it can be hard, but try really, really hard to try to get some of that time in there. Um, also, like, looking at, like, your old stuff, like, as in clothing, in the back of your closet, in your drawers, um, of your dresser, like, anywhere for, like, old treasures that, like, you really kind of forgot that you had, like, throughout the year to kind of bring out and, like, just transform yourself to kind of feel better without the need to having to go buy something and do something new. That's something that I do every year. For some reason, like, I start bringing out a bunch of old stuff in the back of my closet. I pull it forward, and I start kind of changing my look a little bit. Um... In the study guide, I actually did give you the myth of this constellation and like the Scorpio thing, which I haven't done before, just because I think they're interest. This one's interesting. It has to do with Orion, so you can take a look at that. Um, I did link to actually read the whole thing if you'd like. Um, it should be in the bottom of the sites for you. Um, when it comes to manifesting, um, I always put it's the myth. There's, I always give you guys the basics for actually manifesting during a new moon. Um, but specifically for the for the Scorpio, you need to phrase what you're manifesting incredibly carefully. Very, very, very carefully. I always tell you guys to be careful, but with the Scorpio moon, because this is all about transformation, because it is so much energy at once and it is so passionate, it is so deep and it is so emotional, it is going to read into what you say and it is going to do what you say. So please make sure that you phrase this incredibly carefully with your manifestations. So that's why if you choose one word, you are very, very specific with that one word. If you do a phrase, a whole sentence, sometimes even when I'm manifesting, I'll write out an entire page. You need to be very, very careful with the words that you choose right now. You need to be very, very clear about what you want. Um, so again, for this time, I see a lot of times I like to do one words for manifestation during Scorpio. I usually don't. I try to do it a little bit more because if I say just abundance, with Scorpio, that that could come from a lot of places. That could be abundance of loss. That could be abundance of, it could be a lot of things for transformation. So if I want abundance of finances, I make sure I say abundance in my finances. If I want abundance in my sex life, I make sure I say abundance in my sex life. If I want abundance in patience, I make sure I say abundance in patience. So I get a little bit more specific with this one. Again, you can still do one words, but again, with care of Scorpio, I just recommend being really, really, really careful. Um, and being very, very intentional with the intentions that you're setting. I'm always, I always teach this with you guys. I mean, 
very intentional with the intentions you're setting when you're writing them down and setting the intentions. But with Scorpio, th this time it is like you need to be super, super intentional. So do the shadow work before you set them, um, before you decide what you're going to manifest, before you decide what your intentions are. Um, some topics to really consider right now for manifesting in Scorpio, again, that correspond with it, sex, intimacy, love, transformation, anything that's going to have to do with your magic, your intuition, the occult, um, anything that has to do with death and regeneration and rebirth and renewal like that covers a lot of different things i know they're topics that people think are left-hand path and bad but they're not they're they're actually brilliant amazing topics you can't have a rebirth without death first and you can't have life without death like it's just you have to have it all um so these but those topics really hone on to it relationships and again change like if you really feel uncomfortable unhappy in any way shape or form like now is the time to be able to change it like now is the actual time to figure out truly how you want to change it which path you want to go and how you're going to do it um journaling right now if you don't typically do it right now can be a great time to start because again scorpio energy is incredibly deep it's very passionate it's very emotional so journaling is going to be something you're really going to like you might actually feel the urge to even though you don't usually do it already um usually this is when i if i have a lull in it throughout the year this is usually when it'll pick back up for me um, in my journaling, especially, but I'm more bullet journal. I live out of a bullet journal, so it's a little bit different for me, but I also use it for mental health. Meditating as well. Like if you haven't done meditation before, this is a great time to start. Um, if you can hear my son, I apologize, you guys, right now. He actually is in a completely different room with the door shut. He's just, he's two and a half. Terrible twos, three dangers. He's also on the spectrum. And yes, if you can hear him. I apologize. Yeah um so we'll go back to let's see um elements that it attaches to is going to be water um it's going to be correspondence to the feminine it's going to be fixed um it's also going to be attached to the planets of mars and pluto um that's where you get that transformation that darkness that death is from that pluto um when it comes to animals you're going to have the wolf the eagle the scorpion for tarot you're going to have the death card um, for crystals, there's a lot of different crystals that work with this. Um, I like anything really, um, reds, carnel carnelian, red jaspers, also blacks, obsidian, black tourmaline, um, any like crimson things, um, as well for crystals and stones. You also have malachite, topaz, ruby as well, labradorite because it's really, really for like the stone of magic. You also have selenite because it's a stone for cleansing and purity, um, and then you also have, um, <clears throat> apologize, um, topaz, which encourages openness and trust. Um, I like having that one when it comes to shadow work specifically as well. Um, when it comes to like scents or smells, dragon blood is going to be a big one for this one right now. Um, also like passion flower, um, huge, um, clove, basil, gardenia, chrysanthemum as well. Um, the phrase this is thing for the phrase and the emotion and the desire behind this is I desire. Um, also transformation, but the big phrase is I desire when it comes to Scorpio. Um, I have a lot of correspondence in the study guide, guys. So again, um, just pull from whatever you want for that, whatever feels to you, whatever calls to you. Um, I think I've covered all of them for the most part. Oh, and if you haven't been with me before, a correspondence, if you don't know what a correspondence is, um, the way that I define it, the way that I look at it is it is a way to be energetically connected and linked and tied to the energy through a symbol, a physical thing, a color, whatever it is, it is something that it connects that energy, whether it's an archetype energy, whether it is like the earth, the moon, the universe, a specific God or a deity or a, a goddess, um, but a correspondence like that is your energetic tie, that is your energetic pull, it's your way to honor, it's your way to manifest, it's your way to call on, it's a way you do represent, it's a way to help create that energetic container. Um, other mantras that you can use during this are going to be my intuition guides me through chaos into peace. I'm ready to transform old fears into new powers. I easily manifest all that I desire. Um, you're going to, again, really, really focus on shadow work, really focus on transforming, focus on what you can do to nurture yourself and be healthy with yourself. Um, 
let's see. Did I miss any correspondences for? I think that's really it kind of for that. That's really it for Scorpio. And everything else that's in the study guide is stuff for you guys to pick and choose what you want to use. Um, so at this point, like everything else in the study guide are different rituals that you want to, if you want to use different prayers that you want to use. Um, like I said, I'd put in a new job spell specifically because again, this is Scorpio time for transformation, time for change. Um, and personally, this is something I need in my life. So I felt like, you know what, others might need it as well. Um, so I threw that in there for you guys. So you have that. Um, another way, again, to look at the Scorpio energy is transformation. So think of the Phoenix. That's a great spirit guide and animal to pull on. Um, I use the Phoenix a lot during this time. I'm kind of surprised I didn't bring that up sooner. Um, but using the Phoenix during this time is fantastic for transformation, rebirth, renewal, um, growth, the passion, like all of that. Um, water, super great way to connect to Scorpio. Um, I think a lot of people kind of forget that because Scorpio seems like so passionate that they're like, oh, Scorpio, hot, hot, hot. They automatically think fire, but it's actually, it's very, very emotional. It's very, very deep. It's very, very water. Scorpios are very, very water. Um, I also, again, have one, a spell in here too that I really like, the spell to begin again that works with the quartz. Um, it's for cleansing yourself. Um, and it's a stone that you actually end up keeping that stone that quartz on you. I've used it many, many, many times, even spe specifically during this era. Um, if you've been with me before and you were with me for the mala beads and like the bleep, the breathing in for the beads, it's the same type of concept. Um, if you haven't been with me before, um, you can definitely send me a DM and you can ask me about it. Otherwise, you can wait until that video is posted because it's it is in the video. Um but I did break it down in this specific practice on how to do it here too. And then I have journal prompts for you guys in here. I have some tarot spreads and basics for calling down the moon and calling in a circle. Um, on the very bottom as well, I haven't included this before, but I do have a link to a super awesome site that I really like. Um, and they broke down, like they break down like how this moon's energy will affect each specific sign alone. So what I just gave you is the overview of how Scorpio affects like everybody in the collective, but that website that's at the bottom and like the very, the last page, they actually break down how that's going to affect each sign specifically. So if you want to know, like definitely check it out. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I take a look at it all the time. Um, okay. So do we have now, I'm going to see if we have any questions at all before um, I give you guys your five minutes to start getting ready for me to call in the circle and we can do our shadow work. I will jump in the chat too. Let's see. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, uh, you said uh, this is a great time to go to uh, cemeteries. Which actually, I mean, my husband has been doing that uh, actually for the past couple of months. I thought or I was told by somebody else a while ago that you're only, you only need to leave an offering if you're doing like a, a curse or a hex or something like that. Uh, that was number one. And number two was... What if you don't live near your relatives? Because I used to live in Philly, Pennsylvania, and now I live in Maryland. I'm like six hours, five to six hours away from Philly. And I live very close to a cemetery, but I have no relatives there. So um, should, I, should I still leave an offering? And if so, what should it be? Yeah. So I actually don't go to cemeteries where any of my ancestors are because I like energetically have cut all cords and all ties, like any part of my family. Um, I have a lot of trauma and abuse in my family. So like I actually refuse to work with that energy. Um, so when I go to cemeteries or graveyards and I work with that energy, I'm actually working, like I said, I'm working with the graveyard and all the energies and ancestors that are there themselves. Um, so you can go and you can use the energy itself. You don't have to work with anybody, like your own specific ancestors and deities. I'm okay. sorry, your own specific ancestors and relatives. Um, that's a big reason why, like, I started leaving the offering. That's why some of my teachers actually taught me to do it that way as well. 
leaving it for the graveyard and leaving it for the cemetery itself. Um, and the offering can be whatever you want it to be. It can be a couple of coins. It can be something perishable like food. It can be, it can be wine. It can be beer. It can be whatever you want it to be. Like it, literally whatever you want it to be. I recommend trying not to do salt because I don't like leaving salt in the earth. I just don't like it, but everybody has their own practice. Thank you so much. You are super welcome. Okay. So looking at the chat here. Right here. Do you know us? The chat keeps moving on me. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to look at the chat, then every time I get caught up, it moves. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Okay, so this can affect your life. Oh, yeah, the moon definitely affects your life. The moon affects your life greatly. If you live by the moon faces and you honor the moon faces and you honor that, like the energy and the way you're connecting to it, it greatly affects your life. It affects your sign. It affects the collective. It affects everybody individually. Uh, we are too stubborn. We are so intense. And if you're so yes, I totally agree, Katie. Like, I totally agree. I don't think. I, everybody has like signs in the zodiac they hate and think are bad signs. There's not a single one that I think that way about. I, like I love all of them. It's just like I said, Scorpio energy. It's just a lot for me, and like it, it's just it, every year. It's just a lot every year. This energy just it rips my life up every year. Every year. Yeah. I love that there's Scorpios in here that they'll love it. I see a couple. I know all about Scorpios. Yep, yep, more. Love my students that yeah, but it is very deep energies. Did I somehow get moved back up somewhere? My Reiki teacher. <laughs> yeah. Someone da 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 da. I've been having vivid dreams. Is that a part of a Scorpio moon? Um, I would say like dreams during this moon phase are, yeah, typical vivid dreams during this moon phase are typical um, for people if you have access to the dream world. Um, this, if you are a student, I would highly recommend reaching out to Alex and asking Alex about. Um, if you haven't been with me before, I just can't give you much information about dreams. I do not know why. I've literally never dreamt once in my entire life it's not something I do I don't have access to so I just can't answer much on that but from what I hear from teachers yes during this time it is very very common um I have a moon guide if people want it um we have moon guides on the website as well too we have a couple of different study guides the Scorpios the fire is water sign yeah I agree with that honey as well Um, so this way. um, Kathy, no, my study guides are the way they are. If they're unclear, I apologize. They are the way they are. I, I do not know. I don't have that for you. Okay. I don't see any other questions at all. Okay. Unless Michelle has another question or if that's the hand from before, but I think it's the hand before. I don't think I saw it go down. Okay, fabulous. Okay, if you guys have not been with me before, um, oh, I apologize. I just, I have very, very low energy. Scorpio season does that to me too. I'm so just... sorry about that. I, no, I forgot to lower the hand. No, you're totally fine. You're totally fine. Um, okay, so now's the time to wear, um, again, this is gonna be really simple for you guys tonight. Um, if you work with candles and incense, you can certainly light it and have it there. That's no problem. Um, I always recommend having it there. Um, but for this, you guys really just need something that has water in it that doesn't have a lid on it so that you can be able to look down into the water while we're doing, um, meditation and channeling. Um, it's going to help you connect to that Scorpio energy. It's going to help you connect to like your emotions. It's going to help. It's going to give you a focal point. 
Um, so even if it's a glass of water you have on your nightstand next to you or a table next to you, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Um, it can be mood water if you want. Personally, I'm using Eclipse water. Um, I have so much of it and I just, I use Eclipse water specifically for shadow work. Um, if you have moon water, great. Um, again, you don't have to have it. If you use moon water, Eclipse water, anything like that, it will just enhance things. But the great thing about magic is you don't even have to have tools, period. You can do this without water as well. Um, it just, it enhances it. It changes the energy and it manipulates it a little bit differently. Um, go ahead, honey. Um, I also have snow water. I I heard that's good for transformation. That yes. good too? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is. I almost pulled out one of my jars of snow water because uh, I collect the first ones every year, like as much as I possibly can. And we already had our first one here in Minnesota. So yeah, I um, almost pulled that out, but I decided to go with Eclipse. Snow water works great though. I love snow water. It's actually one of my favorites. I, that's the one reason, that's the only reason, I, the only thing I love about living in Minnesota is getting snow water. Not everybody gets access to it, so I love it. Um, hey, okay. I'm sorry. How do you collect moon, uh, snow water? Um, so it's really the same way that you would collect moon water, like except for what I do is like I collect all the snow in the receptacle and then it stays out there overnight, like within the bin. And then obviously when it comes in, it's going to end up melting. Um, and so then you would get, like take that water and then you can put it into the receptacles where you keep it. Okay, so collect it as it's coming down. Don't just take it from the ground. Oh, no, you could do both. Like, you can collect it as it's coming down into the receptacle. Otherwise, literally, when it's done, like, snowing, what I'll do is I'll collect a bunch of snow and keep it, like, in bins and, like, make sure it stays in those bins and that I have it and that it's, like, pure and it doesn't get dirty from neighbors' dogs running through it or anything like that. And then All when right. it's the next full moon or new moon I take it out I make sure it gets charged and then it comes inside to get melted and put into like the different mason jars oh wow I never heard of that thank mm -hmm. you and yes. thank, thank you honey sons she is so awesome <laughs> she is I love honey <laughs> <laughs> and she always does give you a question or something for you to look up she does she's very good at that <laughs> she loves giving you more work <laughs> oh, okay so now's the time to where I'm going to make sure and go and have the altar reset ready to go Um, it's actually got a special tonight I've never done this before Um, but because it's Scorpio energy, Scorpio energy I actually moved my entire altar um, for you guys so you guys have access to my entire thing right now you guys normally only access have access to little bits and pieces of it um, so I'm going to go make sure that the whole thing is set and ready to go. Um, while I do that, you guys can go collect anything that you guys um, need to collect. Um, and then also what I want you guys to do is everybody has different verbiage for it. The way that you'll hear me usually use a sacred container um, because I view things energetically. That's just the phrasing I use, but it can be getting into a meditative, meditative state, dropping in calling down energy, getting into a sacred space, sacred container, your sacred temple, whatever it is. I want you guys to spend like the next three to four minutes doing that while I make sure everything's ready to go. Um, when I come back, I will call in the circle. I will call down the moon. We will call in some Scorpio energy. Um, and then I'll have you guys do some shadow work and then we will call it a good night. Um, so I will have you guys do that while I do that. Like normal, my camera will go off for those couple minutes. My microphone will be muted. I'll make sure that's all ready to go. Um, I got a lot of candles to light, so I will be right back. Oh, I love that avatar.
Okay, everybody. Deep breath in. Bend out. And out. I called the guardians and gatekeepers. Of the direction, <clears throat> I apologize, guys. I called the spirits and guides of each person within this circle, and I called the guardians and gatekeepers of both above, below, and all around us. I ask you to come closer, and I ask you to encircle us and surround us. To surround us with protection, wisdom, and connection. I ask the guardians and the gatekeepers of the four directions to turn your gaze to us this evening as we honor their sacred presence. And we ask you for your guardianship and your guidance tonight. I call to the directions of East, the element of air. I invoke you air to be the movement in my life to create exquisite flow of energy, to teach me air to move with ease, and to be both within and without, above and below, and to not be bound by my circumstances, my fears, or my failures. I call to you to the direction of ease and the element of air, and I honor you as my breath and the life force that is within me and within each and every soul within the circle this evening. Guardians and gatekeepers of the element of air, I see you, I summon you, and I thank you so very much for holding the Eastern Gateway tonight. I call to the direction of south and the element of fire. You are both a candle flame and a wildfire. I call to you to the direction of fire, and I ask you to continue to remind us to burn with untamed passion, to burn with untamed motivation for our goals, mm -hmm. our dreams, and our desires. Mm -hmm. I call to you to the element of fire to teach each and every one one of us to can to burn to kindle our flame with inside of us. To let our flame burn bright and to burn long. For us to not be bound by convention or boundaries or rules. I call to you to the element of fire to remind us to be fearless in our transformation, in our expansion, and in our growth. I call to you to the element of fire to remind us to honor the courage that's within each and every one of us and to honor our free and wild spirit that guides us. I call to you guardians and gatekeepers of the element of fire. I see you and I summon you. And I thank you ever so much for holding the Southern Gateway tonight. I call to the direction of West, the element of water, You are the waves that rise above me. You are the emotions deep crushing, deep with inside of me. You are the water that flows through the rivers, the oceans, the creeks. You are the rain that falls to purify and wash away. I call to the element of fire, to the element of water. I ask you to continue to feed us, to nourish us, to bathe us, to cleanse us, to remind us of the cycles of life. I call to you to the element of water, to teach us to move with the tides, to flow with the flows of the universe, to flow with the tides around us. I 
I call to the element of water and I ask for you to remind us to surrender all that we do not need and to be willing and open to release. To be willing to experience our deepest emotions, our deepest fears, and our deepest desires. I call to the guardians and gatekeepers in the element of water. I see you and I summon you. And I thank you ever so much for holding the Western Gateway tonight. I call to the direction of north, the element of earth. For you are the continent, the trees, the wilderness, the animals, the creatures, the insects. You are everything in between. I call to the element of earth and all your uncharted spaces and your uncharted wilderness that have yet to be claimed that are free and wild where the elements find their home. I call to the element of earth and all the places I've lived on it, all the places I've walked on it and all the places I've been. I call to the element of earth where the bones of my ancestors reside, where dust and growth and rebirth and transformation and renewal and the cycle of life occurs. Teach me, dear earth, teach us, dear earth, to hold on to the expansion of our feelings and to learn the depth of them and everything that they mean, to not be found by our fear, to hold our strength and to be grounded and rooted in who we are as we age and as we learn and to trust in the roots that we have deep within us. I call to the element of earth and I ask you to remind us to stand our ground, to hold our boundaries, and to be rooted and buried as we go through this transformative period. I call to the guardians and gatekeepers of the element of earth. I see you and I summon you and I thank you ever so much for holding the northern gateway tonight. I call to the guardians and gatekeepers both above and below, all ascended masters, deities, ancestors, spirit guides, elementals, interdimensional deed entities, and all other beings that choose to be within the circle to help guide night. I call you and I summon you and I thank you so very much for holding the gates both above, below, and around. Amen. Aho. So moat it is. Okay. The circle's been cast. I'll give you guys just a minute here. Yeah. Get stuff situated. And, and then it'll give, give me a minute to also kind of breathe here for a second. And then I'll call down the moon specifically. And then we'll start going into shadow work here for you. I see a question in the chair. Oh, thank you about the avatar. It took me a long time to find that one. I, I'm i very picky. Uh, I think the moon said, it doesn't matter when it comes to the moon. You can actually collect moon water for three days. There's a three-day period, both before, during, and after the moon. You have three days that you can harness the energy base. My moon water is literally connect, collected and, and like out there for three nights. If it's not, like I'm actually like frustrated about it. Like I actually, I don't like it. That's part of my practice, though. Everybody's practice is different. But, like, for me, like, mine has to be out there for those three days. Nights, I should say. Oh. Okay, guys. I want you guys to drop back in so I can get the moon called down here for us. He's in... Breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. In the darkness of this new moon, we plant new seeds of intentions. As we know, this is a brand new beginning. Be this is a sacred time 
Is it time for us to start start our new intentions? Is it time for us to start new projects? Is it time for us to start new goals? We call to the new moon energies and we choose to believe that all the things that are meant to come our way and to come into our life and on our path are going to follow us. We call to you, goddess, O oh Mother Moon, and we thank you for all you have provided to us the previous month. We accept and we embrace your powerful energies. We acknowledge that you give us strength for the month ahead, and we acknowledge you give us the power to manifest the things that we choose to plant tonight. Under the dark of the new moon, we allow ourselves to be reborn. We allow our intentions to take root. We believe in the being of who we are. We believe in our vision. We believe in our worth. We set our focuses now on our intentions and our seeds we choose to plant to harvest by the full moon. We honor this nurturing process and we let go to allow all of your creative energy and force to flow within us. We allow it to provide us sustenance and we take it and we use it as our own magic, as our own light and to help guide us to what we need in our darkest of hours. We call to you, Mother Moon, and we thank you so very much for being here with us tonight. Amen. Aho. So no titties. Okay, guys. We're going to jump into some shadow work here. Now that we have the moon and we have the circle and Scorpio's here. And if you haven't been with me before, there's always deities here because I'm always working with deities. I just don't specifically call them for you guys. Because not everybody works with deities, but you will feel mine. Um, also, my energy is incredibly purifying. It's incredibly cleansing. So that's just going to come through for you as well. It's going to be what's happening for you guys. So just let it let it work through you. Um, when it comes to shadow work here, um, I'm going to kind of walk you guys through, through some prompts. Um, while I'm doing that, I want you guys to latch on to what's calling to you, what's focusing on you. I want you to reflect on, or write down on that piece of paper, um, what's calling to you with this shadow work, what's really pulling on to you, if there's specific questions, if there's a specific answer, if there's a specific clarity that's being called for to you. Um, typically, I usually work on manifesting with you guys um, during this time. I got, I want you guys to do that on your own after, the, after this, based on what happens right now during shadow work. Um, so your bowl of water, your container of water, I want you guys to have this in front of you as well. It's going to be your focal point. Um, it's going to be what you're going to be focusing on. Um, it's kind of a way of scrying kind of what you're going to be doing, but you don't have to focus that intently on, on it or use it in a scrying way. It's really just going to be your focal point to kind of pull you back into a meditative state to focus on that shadow work. If you fear fear coming up, if you fear avoidance coming up, if you feel like any type of shutdown coming up to any questions that you hear, any emotions that you have coming up, focusing on this water is gonna help pull you back into that meditative state and to remind you the emotions that you're focusing on and like why you're doing this is gonna pull you back to that Scorpio energy is gonna pull you back to that element. Um. You can even put your fingers into it if you'd like, but you don't, I don't highly recommend that because you're going to want to take it out to write if you need to, and then your paper's just going to get wet, but it's, it's totally up to you. Um, again, this is like, this is really just an energizer. This is really just a focal point. This is really just like a meditative, like grounding place for you, this water. That's really what it is. It's really what we're using it for. Um, and we're using it for those intentions, that shadow work, that everything to come through with that. Um, do we have any questions on that portion before we go? I I love water scrying, honey. Um, and again, like if it comes through kind of more of water scrying, again, when you're focused on it, you may feel a certain emotion flood through you. You may see something, the water may move. It You may like pay attention to that and make a notation of that. If you want to ask specific questions about that later, you can ask me definitely. Maybe honey would be fine with you asking her as well. Um, but again, like if, 
notice if you see it move. Notice if you see any shapes take place. Notice if you see any of your bubbles change. Notice if you see any of that different. Um, because that that also will help lead you through your shadow work. That'll also help lead you through these prompts and these questions. Okay, I don't see any questions about this. So, okay, guys, we're gonna go right into it. Breathe in and breathe in. In and out. Now I need you to be open. I need you to imagine your energy field just opening wide up. However that looks for you, if you visually see it, if it's energy, if it's color, your energy field needs to be wide open. And I need you to say to yourself that you are willing and able to reflect and receive whatever information is going to be coming to you during this shadow work session. Whether it's a version of yourself, whether it's an answer, whether it's a message, whether it's something else, anything that shows up to you, you are willing you are open to receiving whatever is shown to you. Without judgment, without resentment. I'm not going to say without fear because you definitely have fear and anxiety. Without judgment and without resentment, just being open and willing. I want you to imagine a place deep within yourself, whether it's in your soul, in your psyche. Some people call it a, their sacred temple, your meditative space. I want you to go there. If you have some place to sit, you can sit. If you want to stand, I want you to be as comfortable as you can be. Whatever this space is, wherever you go to feel safe, to feel protected, to feel open, for all parts of you. And in this space, I want you to feel energy around you. Feel how magnetic, how passionate, how charismatic, how forceful it is around you, how deep and fluid and moving it is around you. Imagine this energy feels like, sounds like, looks like the phoenix rising from the ashes, completely transformed, unburdened, ready to go, powerful, more powerful than ever. It's this explosion of rebirth, this explosion of energy, explosion of transformation from smoldering, smoldering this emanating power and transformation and change. All while knowing it's all for your higher good, it's all for your sacred contract, and it's all for your soul purpose. Now while you're sitting in this space, while you're sitting in this energy, while you're feeling protected, while you're feeling surrounded by passion and energy and motivation and transformation and renewal, while you're feeling open and willing to receive, 
either in your sacred space or physically in front of you. I want you to use your water. I want you to look into it. I want you to ask it, what parts of me do I struggle to face? What parts of myself do I avoid? Do I hide? Do I turn away from? Do I, do I shove in the back? Have I abandoned? What parts of me do I struggle to face? Remember, this is coming from a place of being open and willing and honest to hear. Look to that water. See if it moves. Do you hear something? Do you taste something? Do you feel something? Use it as a focal point. If this is too difficult, if it's too struggling, remember that water is fluid. It is your emotions. It is your desires. It is your deep, deep, energetic connection to water. What parts of me do I struggle to face? And the next question is going to be, what truth have I been resisting? What truth has been in front of my face that I have been refusing to open up my eyes and see? What truth, what thing, what transformation, what change needs to happen in my life have I been resisting? Remember the water is there to be focus, helping clarity, attached to the emotion. What truth have I been resisting? What of me do I struggle to face? What do I judge in others that I secretly judge in myself? Because really, being judgmental about somebody else is also being judgmental. So what do I judge in others that I secretly judge in myself? Others are mirrors. They reflect back to us the things that we need to and don't to see. You can gaze into the water to use it as a mirror as well. To reflect back to you the things that you do not want to see. What do I judge in others that I secretly judge in myself? Where do I feel like I'm being a hypocrite? Where do I feel shame and guilt? What is the fear and anxiety within me trying to protect me from? What is the fear within me trying to protect me from? Is it an emotion? Is it a past trauma? Is it happiness? Is it love? Is it abandonment? What is the fear within me trying to protect me from?
In what ways have I been self-sabotaging myself? In what ways have I been self-sabotaging myself? Whether it be subconsciously or consciously, passive aggressively, straight up in people's faces. How have I been self sabotaging myself? What parts of my life have I been purposely tearing apart and burning down? Am I going into a cycle of avoidance? How am I self sabotaging myself? Remember here in your sacred place, remember you in your sacred temple, protected, you're safe, and you are willing and open to receiving any answers that are coming forth to you. You're in a field of protective energy that's full of transformation, it's full of rebirth, it's full of renewal, it's full of emotion. Don't forget to look back to your water if you need to, to remind you of the emotions that you were there to experience, the connection they're bringing you to, the Scorpio, Scorpio energy they're drawing you to for transformation, passion, motivation, renewal, and regrowth. Last prop I'll have you guys think about which will help you think about the intentions you'd like to set this cycle, is what rebirth, renewal, and transformations do I have to go through this cycle? What rebirth, renewal, and transformations do I have to go through this cycle? Is it my whole life? Is it just one area? Is it my relationships? Is it my finances? Are my friendships? Is it my career? My hobbies? My entire way of life? My health? My lifestyle? Was it how I parent? Is it how I respect my spiritual self, my spiritual beliefs, my gods, my deities, the universe? What rebirth, transformation, or renewal do I have to go through this cycle? I usually find that it's either my whole life or it's one to two. It just, I have to go through that cycle. Ask that phoenix energy around you. What are you ready to burn down and build back up in absolute empowerment and desire and passion and motivation? Give you another minute to sit with that next energy, to sit with that Scorpio energy, to sit with that transformation energy in your sacred space. To appear into that water. To focus your emotions, your passion, your motivation for change and growth and transformation. The desire for death and rebirth and renewal. Ask if there's any last messages, any last things that you need to receive. Any last intentions that should be set. 
Any last manifestations and seeds you should think of? Any more prompts that you need to come back to? If a version of you, whether it be your inner child or another version of yourself showed up, thank them so very much for being here. If a guide showed up, thank them so very much for being here. I call back the moon, the mother deity, the mother goddess. I thank you so very much for the energy you provided us, the manifestation, the seeds, the shadow work that you were providing us. I call back the phoenix energy, the energy of Scorpio, the transformation, the renewal, the rebirth. I ask that you sit with each and every one of these souls in the ways that they need. That you carry through with them outside of this circle to the lives outside of here. That you come back to them when they need you. And if more messages need to be revealed, that you're willing and able to show them to them at the right time. Call each and everybody within the circle back from their sacred space. From your temple, from your guides, from any version of yourself that may or may not have shown up. I call you back here to be centered, to be guided, to be focused, and to remember all the messages that you received. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers, the direction of east and the element of air. I thank you so very much for holding the Eastern Gateway this evening. I call back the guardians and gatekeepers of the direction of south and the element of fire. I thank you so very much for holding the Southern Gateway this evening. I call back the direction of west and the element of water. I thank you so very much for holding the Western Gateway this evening. I call back the direction of north, the element of earth, and I thank you so very much for holding the Northern Gateway this evening. I call back all guardians and gatekeepers from above and below, all ascended masters, interdimensional beings, deities, spirit guides, ancestors, all other entities, elementals, and any other being within the circle here this evening. I thank you for holding both the gateways above, below, and all around. And I release you. Amen. Aho. So move this. Okay, everybody. Okay, so thank you guys. Um, we're back. I hope that everybody got what they needed out of that shadow work session. Um, I hope that you sit with anything that was given to you, any messages that you received. Um, I'm actually not going to ask for anybody to share tonight. I really kind of want everybody to just kind of sit with this on their own to be honest. Um, if you want to DM me privately, I will always recommend that and let you guys do that if you'd like, but I really want you guys to sit with this one. This is really transform transformative energy. It's going to do, it's really going to push you. Um, it pushes me a lot. Like I've, like I've touched on this every, every time this year, my life gets turned upside down. Um, so again, thank you so much, you guys, for being here with me. If you guys have any questions, you can pop them in the chat now if you'd like, otherwise you can DM me. Um, but again, I really, really hope you guys got everything that you needed from it. Take what you need from the study guide. Um, make sure that you do your own ceremony as well. Cause again, I'm going to be doing my own stuff tonight, my own stuff tomorrow. So like I do stuff all on top of this, make sure you guys go and do your own stuff as well. Um, it helps you connect. What do you got, honey? I don't actually have a question this time for once. Um, I, I just wanted to, uh, say thank you very much for this um i tend to multitask a lot and you're and during your ceremony part of the classes i always just stop and it's very calming and reorganizing my brain in the best way so just thank you for doing these 
Oh, thank you for saying that. I really, really appreciate it. I love hearing that. I'm so glad that I can do that for you too. It makes me really happy. Um, Ashlyn, what are the three words you said at the end of the shadow work and what does it mean? Um, are you talking about the amen, aho, so mode it is? Um, so obviously people know what amen is. Um, aho is a Native American version and so mode it is, is a pagan ending for, it's pretty much the pagan version for amen. So mode it is, is pretty much the pagan version for amen. It's pretty much the ending. It's the cutting it off. It's the saying, it's the, it's the gratitude. It's the being thankful. Um, it's kind of, it's also like, it is what it is kind of also is what it means. It's, it's a lot of different takes on it, but pretty much it's pagan version for AM. Amen. That's the biggest, the biggest, easiest way to describe that. Um, okay. Thank you so much, you guys. I really, really appreciate you spending your evening with me. Um, Have a good night. And let's see, I think I have class on Thursday, second part of protection class. We're covering tools and what people consider baneful magic um again i don't look at it that way but binding freezing spells things like that i'm gonna go over all that cursing hexes all that fun stuff did you uh, say that with your second class yep that's my part two for protection um i did protect the part one for protection not la not this last thursday but the thursday before okay thank and, you yeah then we did like i did warding i did banishing i covered all the basics of protection i did shielding and all that so when that comes out on youtube that'll be that stuff thank you so much you're welcome and then uh sunday we're doing the norse goddess um hell she's a rule of hell hun. so if you guys want to come to those i love to see you there but have a good night everybody have a great night hope you feel better